What we're going to do today are three different things. We're going to talk about simulation of data with noise. Okay, so you can imagine that that has to do a lot with random number generators, and we'll be talking about them. Talking about, I know in Marcus's class, you've probably done a lot of OD45. Um, we're so going to be talking about OD15X, slightly different solver, and why you might find the need for that. Then we'll be talking about this concept of compartmental modeling, and we'll be seeing how that's useful in bioengineering or biomedical engineering problems. And again, uh, just to reiterate, the idea here is to sort of you know, enable you to be able to um, think about different biomedical engineering applications and sort of think about these things in that context. It's not, I'm not emphasizing or going to emphasize theory in this class, but rather just the application, sort of the engineering cap. Um, so, okay, so, so let's jump right into it. So, we're going to be talking about three different random number gen. They're just linked onto OpenEdX. So. so there are three different random number generator functions that we'll be concerned ourselves, concerning ourselves with. So that's rand, rand n, and rand i. Just going to do a quick sort of help on these functions in MATLAB here. Um, Help rand. This is basically going to give you, let's see, it's going to give you a random number from a uniform distribution. Does everybody know what a uniform distribution is? So if you have a uniform distribution, distribution between 0 and 1, there's an equal probability of getting a number anywhere between 0 and 1. Right? If you look at the statistical distribution, it's just a flat line. Right? And you can ask it to give you sort of an array of numbers if you want. You can ask it to give you a single number. For a single number, you don't have to specify any argument. You can just do rand and then just empty braces and then get a single number. Yeah. I think, I guess, generally speaking, I want you all to remember that these are random number generators in the case of computers are never com truly random. They're pseudo-random. And there are much more complicated random number generators than these, which are more random than these. But a lot of the, um, it's just, we're not going to get into the exact mathematical relationships of how these are derived. But it's something important to remember that if you actually save the starting state of the random number generator, and you generate 100 random numbers, and then you restore that state, and then you generate another 100 random, number, uh, random numbers, then they'll be actually the same. So that's something important to keep in mind. There's no such thing as a true random number. Um, so that's rand, uniform distribution. Rand n is for, you can again do help rand n, and that is going to, I'm just going to tell you, that gives you a um, random number picked from the, what's called the standard normal distribution. Does anybody know what the standard normal distribution is? Mean of 0 and 1, and what's the character of the distribution? Yeah, Gaussian normal, right? Is that familiar territory? Okay, good. Um, also, it's one other property, I guess, of the standard normal that we haven't exactly talked about. What would be the integral of that? The, yeah, well, the integral of the standard normal will just be if you integrate from minus infinity to infinity, just one. Um, okay, so that's that. So two, and then the third one, which also might be useful at some point is just rand i. And rand i is just, you can specify a range of numbers, say 1 to 10, and it's going to give you random integers from 1 to 10. Okay. So that's, that's useful. All of these functions can give you single numbers or arrays, like whole matrices, like if you want a 2 by 2 matrix of uniform random numbers on the distribution 0 to 1, you can use rand directly for that. Now, how do you get random numbers with other ranges? For example, how would you generate a random value from a uniform distribution for 1, 3 instead of 0, 1? So you look at the size of this interval, which is 2. So you know, multiply your rand with 2. And so this has the range 0, 2 now. Does that make sense? And then you just add 1. And so then that has the range 1, 3. Does that make sense? So you can easily shift these around. 
don't think so. There might be in RAND. Um, they do it traditionally. Um, probably look at the help very quickly. Yeah, I don't see any parameters of right here, but so I mean it's yeah. So that's how usually I do it. For Gauss, is that I mean, th but this makes sense, right? And then for a Gaussian distribution, again, we talked about how rand n is mean zero, standard deviation one. If I want to get, say, mean two, standard deviation three, I'll do three times rand n, and that'll give me mean zero, standard deviation three, right? And then I add two, so everything shifts, and so then it's two. Does that, does that make sense so far to everybody? There are a lot of other probability distributions, as you might have seen in statistics classes, you know, Poisson, exponential, all the sorts of stuff. MATLAB can accommodate all of them. So Poisson has a special Poise rand function, which is sort of like the rand n function. But in the case of Poise rand, I think you specify the parameter of the Poisson distribution, which is basically the lambda, you know, which is, which is the parameter characterizing the Poisson distribution. For the exponential, you do that with x rand. And then there's also this function, which is itself called random. And there you can actually specify the name of the distribution. You can just go to help random, and you can see all the distributions that MATLAB can give you random numbers from. And then you can use that, generally speaking, to get any random number. Any questions so far? Is that fairly reasonable so far? <laughs> 